What's got Megan in stitches? Pregnant Duchess in tears of laughter as children sing her a song about mosquitoes, before she skips a walk through a forest in Tonga over Zika fears. The Duchess of Sussex was left in stitches as she and her husband were serenaded with a song about mosquitoes as they continued their official royal engagements in Tonga. The Tupu College Boys Choir sung a comedy riff complete with flying actions and buzzing noises to welcome the couple to the forest surrounding the school on Friday. Prince Harry and his pregnant wife Meghan Markle were there to dedicate two of the school's rainforest tracks to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Project, which conserves indigenous forests for future generations. But the focus was more on the mosquitoes. The aim of the song was to frighten off any mosquitoes that might be buzzing around. Tonga is one of the countries the Foreign and Commonwealth Office advise against all but essential travel due to the Zika virus if pregnant. The original plan was for the Duke and Duchess to walk through the Tuloa forest but only Prince Harry did, possibly because of the Zika risk. The couple arrived at the school, which is the oldest secondary school in the Pacific founded by missionaries, with Princess Angelica of the Tongan royal family. They sat on two velvet thrones during the performance and a host of speeches, with the couple smiling at each other. Meghan had changed outfits for the occasion slipping into a blue $595, pound 326-418 US dollars, Veronica Beard dress from her green and white striped dress she had worn earlier in the day. Minister for Agriculture's M.I.Z. Torlani Fukuha gave a speech in which he said it was imperative to protect the rainforest due to the rare flora and fauna being wiped out. One example of this is the rare local parrot called Koki. Hence the importance of treasuring these national reserves. In the forest one can glimpse the whole of Tonga. The generations of Tonga today and tomorrow are availed of the opportunity to learn from these forest sites, he said. Today Tonga becomes a full member of the QCC and Tatei which signifies the importance of Her Majesty's long reign. A fountain of peace and prosperity for the people of Tonga for future generations. I wish Your Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess a safe journey to the land of Long White Cloud New Zealand. The Duke also gave a speech while marking the unveiling of the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. My wife and I are so pleased to be here today to mark the dedication of not one but two forest areas to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Initiative, which started in 2015 in honor of my grandmother's lifetime of service to the Commonwealth, Prince Harry said in his speech. Tonga is leading by example and understands deeply the impact of environmental changes because they directly affect these islands. Planting trees and conserving forests helps us in so many ways. It is a simple but effective way to restore and repair our environment, clean the air, protect habitat and enhance our health and well-being. The choir then sung Welsh anthem Guide Me O Thou Great Redeemer and prayers were said. The couple unveiled two plaques and inspected the koki from the forest who was sitting in a cage. Aides had reassured the couple the red-breasted parrot was safe and well in his cage. Prince Harry then ventured into the forest, with boys from the college showing him coconuts. College students Timot Fano Kalafi, 12, and Siosi Uviakite, 16 showed the prince where coconuts were grown and how they look after the trees. The duke walked on and met some more students, asking one boy about flying foxes, what is the population here, do you know? The boys nervously left and the principal told the duke there were around 100. Prince Harry then asked, have you seen one? Is it cool? The boys nodded and laughed. As the duke approached some boys lighting a fire, he looked concerned and said don't burn down the rainforest guys. Don't. But they reassured him they were just burning coconut shell. As he came out of the forest, the school choir were playing the English rugby anthem Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Prince Harry began to sing along and encouraged the crowds to sing louder as he walked along. He rejoined wife Meghan and they left to much applause and cheering. Prince Harry had changed into a suit following his excursion to the forest but Meghan remained in her blue dress. Before the couple left Tonga, the Duke and Duchess were driven to the royal palace for an audience with King Tupu VI and his wife Queen Nana Zipuau. The couple entered the wooden, whitewashed palace and spent about 15 minutes inside with the Tongan royals. They also shook hands with the Tongan ruler and his wife with Meghan noticeably curtsying to the Queen. They were later given a royal send-off at Fuamatu International Airport after Tonga's Princess Angelica warmly bid them farewell from the tarmac. 
Prince Harry and Meghan were met at the airport's VIP hospitality suite lounge by the Tongan Royal and a party that included Deputy Prime Minister Semizi Lafukia Asika, Secretary for Foreign Affairs Ambassador Mehuta Palnitla and Secretary to Cabinet Alitatupu. The group spent 20 minutes chatting inside before the Duke and Duchess were escorted out by the Princess and the farewell party. Ahead of the couple's six-hour flight to Sydney, Meghan appeared in good spirits, smiling as she caught sight of traditional Tongan dancers performing on the airfield. As they walked to their chartered Qantas flight along a path lined with several large handmade tapa mats and children from local schools, the pair stopped at the steps of the plane and thanked the princess. Thank you so much for your hospitality, Meghan said. The royal couple previously met with Tonga's prime minister as part of their marathon 16-day royal tour, before taking in a noisy celebration of the country's youth and culture, with the duchess dazzling in a green and white cotton designer dress. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle dropped by the St. George government buildings in the country's capital Nukualofa for an early morning call on Akilai Zipohiva, Deputy Semizi Lafukia Sika in the cabinet. The mother-to-be was wearing a $1,595, pound 881-1,122 US dollars, striped print dress by Australian-born fashion designer Martin Grant, brushing off the minor fashion faux pas she made when she arrived in Tonga day earlier in a striking red dress. The Duchess, 37, still had the label hanging from her self-portrait dress as she walked along a red carpet to the sounds of local singers wearing grass skirts at Fuamatu Airport in Nukualofa on Thursday. The couple were also met by more than 50 civil servants wearing red and black shirts and traditional outfits as they entered the St. George government buildings for the meeting, most of which was held in private. One child held a sign saying free hugs which drew a smile from Meghan after she spotted it. The couple then took the lift to meet the Prime Minister, with Prince Harry asking did you enjoy last night? The entertainment was very good. He was referring to a display of traditional Tongan entertainment after a formal dinner with King Tupu VI. The Duke and Duchess were later garlanded with necklaces made from Fa and Pu A Tonga flowers as they arrived at the Fanelua Centre to celebrate Tongan youth and culture. The royals each sat on throne-like chairs in the middle of the room, where they were presented with the necklaces, before Princess Angelica gave a speech after a prayer was read. The princess described Prince Harry and Meghan as an inspiration to the youth of the Commonwealth as they were shining a light on youth empowerment. Your visit today draws attention to the fundamentals of today's youth, youth leadership, youth empowerment and addressing the social, economic and environmental challenges of our region. She said, she added the royal couple's visit to the South Pacific, what Captain James Cook had described as the friendly islands, was inspiring the Tongan youth to be the best they can be and noted the tour was the ultimate diplomacy. The Queen's tour of Tonga in 1953 had been the historical highlight in relations between Tonga and Britain, the princess added in her speech. Prince Harry and Meghan also joined with the princess and Prince Ada in being shown locally made products which included traditional mats and tapa cloth and carvings and bracelets made from whale bone and wood. The couple were each presented with a tuvla, an outfit added onto clothing, outside the center, which they proudly wore. The tuvla signifies Tongan respect to higher ranks. The couple then met with local traders and craftsmen, with Prince Harry appearing to do a little dance as the Masani group of singers and dancers performed island music and songs. The Duke and Duchess were also handed a picture of the royal Tongan motif, Fata O Tui Tongan. They said they will put it in their home, art artisanally lousy said. The couple have now en route to Sydney, where they will attend the Australian Geographic Society Awards on Friday night. The next day, the royals will watch the Invictus Games wheelchair basketball final and then the closing ceremony of the games which were started by Prince Harry. Tonga was the third country the royals have visited on their first tour as a married couple, after traveling to Australia and Fiji.